Hi, this video shows the long and kinda cursed development process of the multiplexer board. But first of all, I will show you some shots of the display board. I soldered it on a striped prototyping PCB. I used the grinding tool to cut the traces where needed and soldered bridges to the other side to connect some stripes. I didn't use any driver or shift register, just soldered some current limiting resistors. This was the time before I started using surface mount components, which are way easier to handle. This was the first a bit more complicated board that I have soldered, so I was really proud it worked at the end. But then I have continued to create a multiplexer board. Since I didn't know better, I have tried to do toner transfer using regular paper. It was my first try. I have created a paper pocket where both sides aligned and ironed it to the copper. Because of the regular paper it didn't come out well. Since I was too lazy to run to the copy shop again, I retraced using the marker. After this day I decided to order my laser printer. As you can see the pads are filled, since it is a pain in the ass to drill holes for the pins afterwards, without ripping the pads off and aligning it well. Since it was my first etching I was really happy with the outcome. But then I had to drill the holes and I learned my lesson. I even pretended. it. There are some traces below the ADC chips. It was a mistake to do not any continuity test before I soldered the chips on. At the end the board didn't work well. And since the analog voltage really matters I gave up with this board. After half a year of practice building other stuff, I came back to finish it. Since I've changed my design and had to use three ADC inputs on the microcontroller, I had also to reorder the pins of the display and do some code changes. To create a new PCB design, I've started from scratch using dip trays this time. Place the sockets, the connectors. Since this board has lots of pins and I didn't use any schematics, I used red wires to define the nets. The red wires help you to trace the board and validate the result. After all connections were made, I started to reorganize the board such that there are least possible crossing between the red wires. After placing the first trace manually, I've realized I'm way too lazy to do all the other traces. Thankfully, DipTrace has a built-in auto router. It just creates traces for all the red wires. I've adjusted the trace thickness and the clearance such that the outer router can trace between some pins. This creates less wires and a less complicated routing. I've adjusted the outcome manually to give it a bit more clearance. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a setting to prevent the outer router to connect to the pin headers on the top layer since this is impossible to solder. But I have also a lazy solution for this as you will see later. Since my first multiplexer board attempt, I have discovered the best paper to use, which is also free. When you are printing the layers, only the top layer has to be mirrored. I pre-align the sides, then use this paper glue since the paper glue doesn't dry instantly, I'm still able to shift the layers a bit such that the alignment is perfect at the end. I have a big bundle of PCBs and picked just one that I thought would fit very well, but it turned out it was a bad pick. Of course you have to iron two-sided PCBs from both sides. Transfer was okay, I corrected the clearance here and there and supported some traces with additional marker.
Let's see what happened here. I was a bit careless and scratched some traces. Oh shit! Oh shit! It's still nothing that can't be fixed with the marker. I have also used the sodium persulfate solution this time. As you can see there are also other boards. I just wanted to do a complete batch at once to save time. One of them is also the main board of the MIDI device, which you will see later. As the solution saturates and cools down, the slowdown of the etching process is really noticeable. Used also acetone to clean off the toner. As you can see the board is kinda opaque. I don't know what material this is, but it's really terrible. It probably has some kind of purpose, it's maybe very durable, but you can't drill any holes in it using a regular drill bit. I've started to pre-drill the holes from one side and wanted to connect from the other side to align them better, but it really turned out to be impossible to drill through the board. I've destroyed two drill bits completely. Enjoy some moments of rage I had after half an hour of drilling and destroying my drill bits. Fuck! Fuck is this diamond? This is a total shit. Fuck! Ah, rip off this shit. Shit. Throw this shit away. Give it up. Give it up. I will defeat you. Shit boy. This is very unprofessional. Yeah, rip off my pets. Many of the pads ripped off and the result was really horrible. Shit thing here. In consequence I started all over again and picked a good and thin PCB this time. It came out really well and I was happy. One good thing on self-made PCBs is you can give them a personal touch. Since the solution was already cold, it took really long time to etch this. I realized it's good to cover the pen to prevent it from emitting all the fumes. The etching result was really good and the pins aligned quite well. The drilling was a piece of cake this time. Some of the pads were a bit torn, but it was good enough and magnitudes better than the other attempt as you can see here. To pre tin it I have also used the soldering fat again. Before I started to solder any chips or connectors to it, I did an extensive continuity test and improved the clearance here and there using a conic drill bit. The first step of the soldering were the wires. I'm using cut-off pins for this, which I keep in a box. In lack of multiplexer chips, I had to take apart my old breadboard prototype. So 
soldering is the real fun part of it. I'm using lots of the soldering fat to let it reflow really good. Soldering this board I was really cautious and inspected it a few times and added solder here and there where I thought it might be necessary. Since I'm cheap I'm using always this 40 pin headers and cut them to the right length. It is the best value for money. Now we have to be cautious when placing the pin headers. I don't put the header completely in, just as much as needed to solder it from the bottom side and have enough space to solder it also from the top side. And now even more soldering fun. Finally started to look really good. Next step was to connect the remaining pins on the top layer. You have to be careful there to not touch the plastic with your tip. And finished was the final multiplexer board.